comes back to, you know, how Team Losi Racing and Losi are intertwined. You know, a lot of those materials that we use on the eight went into the to the five T. So that's how the racing supports the RTR side of it. You know, when you look at, you know, a suspension arm looks like a suspension arm, but you don't understand the engineering that was developed from the race side that comes down into the RTR side. Much like we see in full scale racing, you know, a full scale race car, some of the technology does come down into the engines and the tire development, part development, same thing in RC. As Losi was making a lot of the RTR stuff, there was a lot of the diehard Team Losi fanboys out there that were just saying, oh, Horizon's just making whatever they can out of the Losi name and cheap products, and it's they're getting away from who they are, right? And so what we wanted to do is we wanted to kind of separate the Losi, hey, here's your RTR product that's based off, loosely based off the race vehicles, and then here's your Team Losi racing stuff. So we can kind of set those apart and have like, hey, you want to be part of the Team Losi Racing brand? Here it is. To kind of get back to our roots and to this day, you know, that's where you see the black and the white and the yellow and our shirts and all that stuff to kind of signify, hey, here's Team Losi Racing. And then over here is the, is the Losi stuff, with the RTRs. Well, then, you know, we all looked at ourselves in the mirror and said, hey, you know, our heritage is 10 scale off road. What can we do? So it was me. Dan Hissom and Yuka Stanario started the development of the 22 platform. Um, we kind of whiteboarded some ideas. You know, hey, we want to make a car that's rear motor and mid motor. We saw the potential with mid motor stuff coming into play. Um, we made an aluminum chassis, which I was not for at first. You know, I just thought the cost was going to be too high and then consumers weren't going to accept it. So the TLR 22, uh, first car, both rear motor and mid-motor configuration. I want to say 90% of them that were that were purchased were probably all built by rear motor. Uh, we looked at the aluminum chassis and said it was going to be a lot easier to change wheelbases between testing different length wheelbases. You only need, you know, one cut piece of aluminum. You can make it any wheelbase. For a molded chassis, you're going to be making multiple chassis molds or making an insert in your mold to make that chassis longer. And it just gave us the capability of like, hey, we want to go two millimeters shorter. We can make that chassis really, really easily or go to a truck or a short course truck. And then all the clips just bolt onto that. So that's kind of what drove that. And, you know, the big thing was, I, I remember it was one of the, I think it was the Nationals that Dustin won. I mean, we just, we slaughtered everybody there because of our wheelbase. And then all of a sudden you see, you know, we went a really long wheelbase on that car. And... Uh, you saw the associated guys starting to cut chassis and stuff and make the wheel aces longer and stuff like that. So yet again, I mean, it was something that we figured out during our testing. You know, the wheelbase was, that long wheelbase, it, while it was crazy looking, it was, it was something that was a huge advantage. And then it kind of becomes a standard, you know, nine years later that everybody has aluminum chassis. So we worked on that project for about two years, brought it to market in 2011. And I think that year we also won the nationals with it, uh, with Dustin Evans. Uh, so yeah, and that was a rear motor. And then a couple years go by, all of a sudden mid motor starts clicking. We have the conversion to make our, our car mid motor. I still think in 2013, Dakota won the nationals up in Chico with a rear motor. We were the only rear motor car in the main, which was pretty interesting. Um, on that high grip track up there. So we won the nationals with a rear motor car, but then after that, it was all mid motor from there. So when we look at the, the low CRTR line, you know, it's hard for people to really walk into a store and just look at a stadium truck, 10 scale, call it a 22S stadium truck and relate with it. Um, so then you see other companies like per se axial just having great success with this scale vehicle right where something you you can basically buy a miniature version of what you're inspiring to have or you know what you want you know whether it's a jeep or a, a ford or a chevy um low C, much similar but more on the race side you know taking some of these vehicles like the baja ray in development with with the baja ray we kind of had a direction we actually were in tooling already and then Axial announced the score Yeti truck. And we were like, uh-oh, we might be in trouble here because they were very well known for their scale stuff. So we got a sample and drove it 
And that's when I knew, okay, we're okay because this thing is super slow. Like you cannot make it really fast. And I knew just as soon as I got our sample in, I put it on 2S, went out the first time and wrote, drove it and it was twice as fast as the Yeti. I said, okay, we're good. We've got a full roll cage. Um, you know, we can stylize this. They did have the trophy truck name, which we couldn't use because they had it licensed through SCORE. Um, but we had the looks and the speed. And I think that's what basically killed that Yeti score truck was that you just could not get it fast as fast as our Baja Ray. So we lucked out. We lucked out that they didn't develop new gearing and they used an existing platform and we had designed our vehicle to be as, as fast as possible to be, like I said, race inspired. We wanted to look like a real race trophy truck, be fast. I constantly was imagining the slow motion videos of the suspension and those things just, just moving through the bumps and stuff and getting that real look um, from what you see in a real trophy truck. Losi wasn't really doing licensed bodies at the time. Um, we had launched this brand Vitera and we're using the licensing from that. We had Ford and Chevy and Nissan at that time. So the whole project ended up turning into this perfect storm where we realized that we still had to Ford under our licensing agreement with Vitera. We had that Ford Raptor Helix model that we were no longer selling. So we reached out to Ford and asked them, you know, can we just transfer this over to this product in this brand? And to our surprise, they said, yeah, no problem. Um, so Rich got to work on the body design. He had a good relationship with Black Rhino Wheels, which at the time was really pushing their Raptor wheels for kind of the, you know, street Raptor guy. Um, so we decided to partner with them. And then for T1, you know, we really wanted a partner that had a lot of brand equity and a logo and something that people loved. And we recognized that every show we went to, every off-road event, um, there was always a line at the King booth for their apparel. So it was obvious that having them as the main T1 livery was gonna be to both of our benefits as well. Automatically, we saw a huge increase in excitement over the product. Yeah, the Bahare was cool because it had the four link rear end, it had a four piece body, lots of droop, and it was fast. But it was like, as soon as people started to see that it looked like a Raptor, that just seemed to change and just bring them in even more. So I think uh, as time progresses, we're gonna start seeing even more licensed scale products through the low C side because it just looks cool. And we can do our, the performance side of low C, add that in combination with some scale and look out, we got some killer stuff that's gonna be coming. Thank you.